Hello everyone, welcome to Hegemony 3. This is a real-time strategy, strategy game, but kind of a slow real-time strategy game set in the uh, in Italy before the rise of Rome. And from, I played a few test games, and I think this is really cool, and I wanted to show this off to you because I, I really enjoyed it a lot. I can't promise I'm going to do a full campaign and taking over all of Italy because there's just a lot of other games I'm already um, doing series for, but I want to show as much as I can of this just to get the word out there, because I, again, I think this is pretty cool. So we're going to go with a new game. There are currently two scenarios available in this game. Uh, there is also a map editor you can load up and mess around with if you want to. But anyway, as far as the two scenarios, we have the unification of Italy, which is going to be kind of the grand strategy game, the full game. The one scenario they have over here is basically reuniting the four city-states of uh, Etruria, the Etruscans. And it's a smaller scale, and I would recommend you play that first just to kind of familiarize yourself with the game. But again, it is smaller scale. And that's the only two that they have currently available. I don't know if they plan to release more. I assume they will through DLC or free. I'm, I'm not sure. But anyway, let's jump into the unification of Italy. We're going to have choices from 30 different tribes. I think it's 30. It's around that, that amount. Here are all of the tribes. Again, this place takes place in Italy. There are multiple cultures and then different tribes. So each tribe is going to have its own um, bonuses, like this Donny here. Defenses, max morale is down, but their melee damage and charge strength of the units is going to be up, as well as their speed. Uh, so positives and negatives. And every single tribe is going to fall into a faction group. You can see that this is part of the Illyric faction group. The Illyric is basically just telling you what your... Uh, buildings are going to be like what your units you're going to have access to, things like that. Uh, kind of play styles. So we have some Illyric factions. We also have Greek. We have Latin, which is going to be Rome, which is right here. This is before they rise up to greatness and before Caesar. Uh, we also have Etruscans, which are going to be up here. And then these Sab Sabellic. And I think the Sabellic and the Etruscans are very similar in units. I've tried every single faction um and i'm pretty sure those are, are very similar latin is pretty cool i mean it's rome you can't go wrong and then you have the gaelic yeah you have the gaelic factions up here uh this is an illyric faction yeah so that's all of the different faction types uh but again there's multiple tribes you can pick in each faction to kind of go with whatever you want to however you want to play um their defenses here are down but they're very good with missile and melee damage so they're i guess very aggressive these ligures I am going to play as this Illyric faction down here in the corner, uh, Maseppi. Maseppi gets brigade size plus 20%, which their units are going to be stronger, their charge is going to be pretty strong, and their recruitment rate, how fast the recruits come back in their towns, is also increased. So I'm going to choose them. Uh, you can go through and change the AI for every single uh, other clan represented here, but I'm just going to leave it on random. And what's also kind of cool is that you can edit your first governor slash general, like your hero here. So I'm going to go into edit. From here, you can change the name, which I will change the name to uh, Tokarius. The Tokarius. Uh, Gaius? Is that spell Gaius? Tokarius Gaius? I'm not sure. Uh, but we do have attribute points here. Let me see if I actually like what's what we got here. XP earned in combat. Uh, units do level up in this game as they progress through combat so that's not too bad skill research and max morale hmm hmm i'm going to take off skill research because that's more of a governor role this hero can either be slotted into a commander role over a unit or as a governor of a city and right now he's kind of split between gov uh, governor and general here so i'm going to take this away which gives me one attribute point and instead of that Hmm. I could bump this up to 100% XP earned in combat to get our units leveled up very fast and become elites. Well, I don't think becoming elite is an actual thing in this game, but leveling up is always a good thing. Let's try that. Let's try that. We can also change our portrait if you want to. I like the art style of this game. I think it's really fitting from what little I know of this time, which is like almost nothing. But I do like the look of it. We'll just go back with this guy with the check mark. And then, that's it. That's our setup. Let's click this. And we're going to go into the map. Now, again, this is a real-time strategy game, but what I think makes it cool and what you kind of need is that you can pause it at any time. Just going to zoom in here. 
And also this game is going to give you quests to do in the beginning of the game. Actually, maybe even throughout it too. So I'm going to pause it. You'll notice pause with the little red ring that's going around. This is our town. We can zoom out at any time. I love this zoom out map. I love when this is a feature in any game. When you're able to just zoom in and zoom out just like that. I think it's great. Um, let's see. First thing is first. What we need to do, if we zoom out here, you're going to see different resources. So resources, we need to capture them with... Either our military units, if the enemy has them, or if they're neutral like they are right now, we can just assign some workers to them. Illyric workers. So we're going to recruit 10 workers. It's going to cost us 10 uh, gold, or I don't know what actual currency is called. We'll just call it gold. It's going to cost us 10 gold. I'm going to queue that up. And then after that, I'm also going to get up a unit of soldiers. So this Illyric faction is kind of unique because most factions only start with a basic melee and a basic ranged. But now, but I'm um, sorry, but the Illyrics here, they have access to these Illyric Peltas, which are pretty strong. If you just hover over, you get their stats. And these guys are pretty strong for this early in the game, which is kind of cool. But I'm just going to go with these basic Illyric Skirmishers, which are sword and shield people. We're going to queue them up. And I'm going to unpause it. I'm going to dismiss those. So right now you can see the green bar is the number of workers currently available, and now we have a new objective. Our supplies are running low. If we wish to raise an army and grow our city, we will need to gather more food from the nearby farms. Yes, we will. So now, oops. So now we got an objective, a quest. Let's cue that off. Feed the people. So it wants us to recruit a, wor a brigade worker. This happens in the beginning of every single match. Place workers inside of a farm. Uh, this is a livestock farm. A wheat symbol is an actual farm farm. Livestock is going to give us some gold and some food. Vineyard is going to give us mostly gold and some food. Whereas this is mostly food, some gold. And fish is all food. But I th uh, let's see. Fisheries may be connected to water supply lines as well as land lines. Supply lines are a big thing in this game. We'll get to that here in a moment. I'm going to unpause it, let these workers finish being recruited. Again, that's the green bar. Uh, the red bar is their morale. These guys are also being recruited. And they're being pulled away from our recruit pool here. This little number 176 is going down. So if you're in a prolonged war and you keep losing units, you will eventually have no recruits to get your units back. But what is kind of cool is that in most cases, when a unit is destroyed, they just kind of route, go back to town, so you don't lose the experience of that unit. That unit will just rebuild itself, and you'll have your fully experienced unit back in a certain amount of time, as long as you have recruits. Uh, as you can see here, we also have garrison strength, our morale of the town, and then our store of food and wood, both of which are very important. All right, so our workers are now up. I'm going to pause, and then I'm going to assign them... We really need food to start out with, so I'm going to assign them to this livestock farm. I'm just going to right-click, and there they go. You see the little unit moving out there. We can zoom in and see them moving. But I also know from playing this earlier, or from playing this faction before, that there may be bad guys down here. So I'm also going to select this military unit, right click so it leaves the city, and then I'm going to select me, Tocarius Gaius, and I'm going to move myself out of the city. There I am on a horse. I'm going to right click. Wait, oops, I have the other guy selected. Hold on. Am I already part of the- oh, okay, never mind. I already assigned myself to the army. Whoops. I meant to show that, but oh well. So right here is pretty cool. So from here, we can stretch out the formation to make a larger line to have like block a choke point if we want to. We can turn it around. It's really easy to control. And then we can just hold, click, and move to move them where we want them to go. We can also use right click. And then from here, before we unpause, we can adjust the line. You can also go down here into the stance button. Right now, the skirmishers are in skirmish stance, which means their speed is increased. We could also put them into a battle line, which is going to increase their morale and their charge block. So charge block, just to go over that quickly. Um, is this going to bring up their stats? There we go. So you see charge strength is 37. Charge block is 10. So from what I know, I've only played this game a little bit, but if their charge block, let's say, is 40 they could then block the charge of another unit and not take any charge damage, as long as your charge block is matching or higher than the attacker's charge strength. So that's kind of cool too. Uh, but anyway, that's the whole purpose of battle line, is to kind of block charges and in get in increased morale to fight longer. But we're going to keep them skirmish, so they move faster. And I believe we're going to find some raiders down here. I believe. 
Also, if we look up here, we have only plus 10 income a week right now because of the units that we have. It's enough to get another worker unit, or I could go in the um, go in the negatives and get a slinger or another skirmisher. Uh, these slingers are kind of really bad. I'm just going to queue up another Elyric skirmisher because I know that this farm is going to give us some gold, so we're not going to be in the negatives too long. So there we go. We have discovered raiders. They're in this camp. They have two slingers and two melees. Luckily for me, they're not that strong. And our brigade, since it's a higher number brigade because of the faction bonus, or I'm sorry, um, clan bonus, we should be okay. Um, right here, this little yellow line that you're seeing when I'm hovering over this province is the area where your troops are going to be automatically supplied by the local city, as long as there are supplies to uh, give to them. If they leave this yellow area, then they're going to have to rely on their own supplies. When they leave, they will fill up their supplies, and then they'll only have a certain amount of weeks before they need to go back and resupply themselves. So you see here our people are capturing the farm, and then they're going to garrison inside it and start working. I'm kind of surprised that these guys did not aggro. Well, let's pull out our second unit. Even though it's still recruiting, as long as we are in their home province, they will still get their troops out, even though if they're not in the city. So you see the troop size even going higher. So you don't have to keep them inside as long as they're in their home province. Oh god, okay. Here they come. So we're going to charge there. I'm going to have this unit charge there. Now, you see this little icon? This usually means that this is not connected to a supply line. Right now the farmers are working, but they, they can't send anything out because there's no supply line. So we're going to click on our home. And there we go. Now we have a supply line. And we have completed the quest, is what this is saying. We need better information for you to properly prepare defenses. I recommend sending troops out to reconnoiter the surrounding countryside. That's the second quest you're going to get in most cases. All right, so right now if I hover over the supply line, it's going to show you how much gold this takes to maintain. It can get a real pain as your empire grows and you have a lot of supply lines um, because it costs a lot of money. You also see the losses. So what that means is the longer the supply line is, the higher resources you're going to lose on that route. So you want supply lines to be short enough so that you have no losses whatsoever. Also, longer the route is, the more money it takes to maintain. If these enemy units get close enough to the route, then they block the supply line and I will not get any supplies from this livestock farm. And now you can see that we have plus 10 a week, even though I got that second unit because we got um, money from this farm. You got 20 a week from this. So there we go, our units are in combat. Reinforcements are coming. Our general is leading this, so we're probably going to just crush them. Charge! And when they charge, you see the minus one to charge right there? That's how many people we're killing because of the charge. Very cool. Our unit has taken some damage, but I'm going to continue the attack there and go kill those slingers there. We routed these two units. So when they're in this routed formation like this, you can right click and make them slaves. Slaves work for you for free. Unlike workers. Workers maintain an amount of money. Slaves are free. Now this is telling us that one of our units have moved too far. Meaning that we're outside of our province. So now they are relying on their own food that they took from the province. But that's okay. We're not going to be out of our province for long. These are just slinger units. So they're just going to be destroyed. And after that, I'm going to take over this camp. There we go. We got 300 XP. So here's my general. And now if we click on one of these, we can assign an officer to this unit. There's only four officers that you can select, but there are multiple levels of every officer. So like engineer one, then engineer two, three, and so on and so forth. So each one of these does a different thing. If you hover over it, it's going to tell you what it does. But I already know that I want to get a weapons master to increase our melee damage. So I'm going to get the Weapons Master, leaving us only 800 points left. The Medic increases the defense of the unit. Um, I think I may... I think I'm going to get Trainer. Due to the higher size of our brigades, if we lose a battle, we take more recruits to um, get our troops back. So I'm going to get Trainer so it doesn't take as many recruits from our uh, home. So there we go. That's leveled up. Now I'm going to go over here. Now camps can be upgraded kind of like cities. You can build little buildings in here like a warehouse, a watchtower, but camps take 15 gold to maintain. And right now I don't really need that. Ooh, there's an actual farm. Farm. 
Oh, right. Uh, let me actually capture this unit and make them a slave. Not that I can... I, I am not a supporter of slavery, but in this game, I am, because they are free. So what I'm going to do... I don't want to pay for this camp right now. Camps can act as also a place to drop off your uh, supplies. So, for example, if I wanted to capture this um, wheat farm, instead of having the supply line go all the way back up to the city, I could capture this camp and have a much shorter supply line to connect these two, and then a shorter supply line from here to here. As long as they're all connected to the supply route, it's fine. But I'm not going to capture this right now, so I'm just going to right-click and demolish this building, because I don't want to keep it. Not now. But, if I did want to build this building, I could later on build a camp in this same exact spot. There are predetermined spots on the map where you can construct camps. Uh, I can just show you right now. So when I click on construct buildings, any unit can do this. You'll see highlighted where we could build a camp there. There should also be... Uh, I don't think there's any other spots in our vision, but uh, they're kind of all over the place. They're all over the place. Alright, so we got these slaves. We have three slaves. So I'm going to have them start working this vineyard. Now notice it says 0 to 20, so we're not going to get the full amount from this vineyard yet until we get 20 people. Ideally, I want to get 17 other slaves, but I could just recruit a worker unit, a full 20 stack of workers, like here. Put them in here, and then also upgrade this vineyard later on. Uh, I can't do it yet. But later on, I will be able to upgrade each individual resource building to work faster, um, have more housing for workers so you can put more workers in there to get more products, things like that. Okay, uh, let's also go capture these four slaves up there. We'll unpause it. Those slaves are gonna go over here. I'm gonna put our general unit back this way. Oh, okay, so we have another city over here capturing this vineyard. It's a good chance that we, it's probably gonna be a neutral city that we can convince to join us. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna move over here with our military unit. I want to scout this region out so we can see who's over here. Also, also, let's go, tr you know what, before we do that, let's go get that vineyard. And I think there's going to be more raiders over here. So I'm going to queue up from our city another worker. There we go. So I'm going to click on this tab, and this is the progress to get to the next level of your city. You can see at the top of this little box your growth rate per week. How much population growth you need before you can upgrade the city. What happens when you upgrade the city is shown towards the bottom. You'll see food consumption will go down, or I guess technically up. It's a negative 12 a week instead of 8. Income does increase, and the number of recruits stays the same. Upgrade slots is how many different buildings you can build in that city. It's very important to upgrade your city when you can. And if you have an upgrade slot, you can click here. For right now, all we can do is either build the wooden walls or the stone walls. Later on, as, we, as our city levels up, we can build more stuff. Let's pause. After we capture the slave, I'm going to send this unit up to the north. Our fellow countrymen of Mesapi, Mesapi are fractured and without ambition. We should seize this opportunity to bring them under our banner so that we may prosper together and stand strong against our enemies. So what this wants is it wants us to go around in the surrounding areas and visit these different places. I can click here to see where Ignatia is. It's up here apparently. And I like that they have this, because starting out, I have no idea where Brentesian is, but now I do. So if we visit these places and scout them out, I believe that should finish that quest. There we go, we finally caught up to the slave. There's only two left. We'll stick them in that building with the other slaves. Now I'm going to go up here, and if I wanted to, I can um, select both. And then by clicking right, my right mouse button, I can then adjust their formation, kind of like so. And then I can click and hold and drag that formation around. So it's pretty cool, if you want to do that. Enemy sighted. A group of bandits has grown too bold and plans to attack us openly. And there they are. Luckily enough, I'm already sending people over there. Yeah, there's just Raider Skirmishers. We're going to be able to crush them. Josh? Your um, heroes do have hit points. When they die, they just go back to the town that is their home city, and they re uh, recover over time, so you don't really have to worry about that. 
eventually we're going to have enough research points to show you the skill tree here very basic you have military uh economy and then navy i've never messed around with the navy that much i mess around with economy what these do, uh, do is that it um, increases the number of stances that our city has uh let's just show you what that is real fast so if you click a city much like military units cities have stances and if you hover over this it's going to show you exactly what this stance does this doesn't really do anything uh, right now we start with the defense stance, which is going to increase our food consumption, but increases the defenses of the city, lowers tax output. I usually go for the trade, which is going to increase our tax output and lowers our defense rate and recruitment rate, because I like money. Call me greedy. All right, so our working unit is finished. I'm going to put them over here and grab that vineyard so that we can get some more money and a little bit of food. I'm getting it mostly for the money. Let's pull in this other military unit because I think there's going to be a few raiders over here. In fact, there's another raider camp with only two slingers. That's easy. No, oh, wait. And skirmishers. That's okay. This unit can hold them off for now. Are the units on the way? Oh, nice. We engaged both units in melee. So when you're locked in combat, they can't retreat. So they're mine. Oh, that's that's the farmers. All right, go here. Looks like the uh, slingers are moving over here. And charge, charge. We should get some charge damage here. Yep, got some kills. And more slaves to be had if we can, can capture them. All right, okay. So let me attach this to the supply line. There we go. That costs two, and we're getting ten gold and two food out of this currently because of the number of workers that we have. So the supply line is worth it. Okay, now let's go capture these guys. This unit will go and pillage this for now. Because we also get money when we destroy these camps. Or, since we have two vineyards right here, or I'm sorry, a livestock farm and a vineyard, I may actually just keep that... How much is this going to cost us? Five? It probably costs us two or three. Ah, nah, that's fine. We'll just destroy this camp for now. And we discovered a region. Probably one of the regions we needed to discover. Alright, I guess Uzentum is down there. Is this Hodrum? Oh. Oh, wait. Wait, what? Okay, I guess there's two regions down there. Aha! More slaves. Alright, so we will stick them in here. What I can also do, because all of these slave units are considered separate right now, I could pull them out and merge them all together if I wanted to. Where'd the other group go? Now, we are outside of our um, supply range, so now we're on our own supplies, so I gotta be careful. When you have no food for a unit, their morale drops, and when their morale drops, they are easier to kill. I don't believe there's actually any desertion that goes on. I'm not sure where the other unit you know, went. Alright, let's get back. And I'm going to go down here. Ah, alright, so this is a handy icon. This is telling us that we can now level up the city. So if we click on the little plus icon, just click on this, and our city is starting to level up. It does cost wood. You can see right there, 200 wood. We have 400 in stock. But what kind of sucks is that this part of the world, there's no lumber mills or lumber farm, lumbering areas that we can get more from. So you have to be very careful in the beginning about what we upgrade because all buildings, as you can see, cost wood. Uh, so right now in this vineyard, what I could do is get this living quarters, which I think is really good. It doubles the size of the workers that can work there. So you get double the amount of resources. I think it's really good, but it costs 400 wood. We only have... Well, like 400 in stock? Yeah. And 200 of it's going to be... Actually, I think maybe it was just used to upgrade, actually. Hmm. So what I could do... Well, let's just hold off. I kind of don't want to use the rest of our wood until we get another source of it. Let's see, we're getting 40 gold, 7 food. What we're going to need is more food. Because when wintertime hits, a lot of the food-producing buildings produces almost nothing. Or maybe very little. And uh, you can starve. And then your 
city gets pissed off it starts to rebel against you it's it's, it's bad and as you can see we only have 81 food stockpiled right now so i need to hit up this wheat farm probably pretty soon rhodium well we're only in mid spring we're okay for right now but these are things you have to think about we're currently at plus 53 weeks so i'm going to get another worker unit and i'm probably going to go for that fishery and i want to try and get this wheat farm too We probably don't need any other military units right now. Uh, this is the trade tab. It kind of shows you what you're getting in from where. It's like we're getting 40 gold from this vineyard right there. And I believe this is how much you can stock in the city. Uh, food and wood. The only reason why I would lower these for maximum is if you want the wood or food to go along the supply line past the city and go to like a camp you have out somewhere that's supplying your uh, troops out on the front line or something like that. That's really the only, only reason I would see that you'd want to drop this. Alright, so here we are. Let's move south. As you can see, they're separate here, but since I grouped them up together, they're now going to become one stack. You can see the resupply, so we just pulled more food from the city because we're leaving the area. Okay, so here's Hodrum. Now, usually, these little cities that are around your starter city will give you quests, and then they'll join you. Usually, it revolves around killing... Um, scrum, um, raiders. Jeez, can't think of the word. Here we go. Okay. With a token tribute of 113, but are overcautious about pledging us their loyalty at this time. Okay, so they gave us a tribute. Alright. If we were to prove ourselves to them, they may join us, or we can simply march in and teach them that they have no real say in the matter. So, you have an option. We can take them over by force, or we can just do whatever they tell us to. Again, it usually revolves around killing raiders. But they haven't given us the quest yet. They usually do, like, right away. Hmm. Here we go. Very good. Okay. So that's what I was waiting for. So capture or demolish the raider forts, which is just a camp. Oh, it's right there. Great. Great. So when we destroy this, they will join us and be part of our empire. Now, let's see. We have 43 right now. Let's put these workers up here to this fishery. Alright, so now we have, what, seven people in there? We'll probably get some more slaves from killing all these units. Josh? And I'm going to have this unit charge the slingers. Ah, we were interrupted a little bit, but I think we got one of the slingers in combat. They're not locked, but they are fighting in melee, which is a foolish thing to do. So this unit already routed that other skirmisher. Like, it's really good. They have no morale, so they routed. That was what the little unhappy face was next to their flag. They routed. Let's just try and capture them immediately. There we go. And they're going to automatically capture any other slaves that are in the area. Or any other routed units. So you don't have to click on every single one. Which I think is really nice. I think now they're going for this one. Yep. So that's a nice feature. Takes away micromanagement. Alright, so we got all the slaves. Oh, no, we didn't. We didn't get these guys. Capture them. We did get them, though. Let's move these guys back to our territory. We finished killing off these slingers. There we go. We got them. And you gotta remember, this takes place in real time. So, I, off I most often pause during combat and take a look around the Empire just by scrolling out. Because at some point, we'll be attacked by multiple raiders, by other... It's clans, it, it can get pretty crazy. Alright, so we have 24 food left, which is more than enough. We're going to demolish this camp. Yeah, I see no real reason to keep it right now. Uh, the camps on the sea can build warships if you upgrade them properly. So later on, this may become an important campsite. But for right now, I'm not looking to go out on the sea. There we go, we got a supply line. Costs four, but we're getting 22 food from the fishery, which is an important our food stocks are very low. Our food stocks are dwindling, Sire. Alright, there we go. And they joined our cause. 
Charez, a prominent local citizen of Hodrum, has been outspoken in support of many benefits. This is basically telling us that we just got a new hero, probably from this city. There he is. So this hero gives defenses plus 30, max morale plus 25, recruitment rate plus 15. So the recruitment rate makes me want to put him as a city governor, but the max morale and defenses, I think, is going to uh, make me actually want to make him a general. So we're going to select him. We have that one other melee unit that can use a general, which is going to be that one. So I'm going to right click and merge. So he's going to go out there and join them. I'm going to click all these slave units and I'm going to merge the, I think I'll do one at a time. Merge, merge. So now there's a full stack of 20 slaves right there. So we can have them go and get into another building all up. Let's see, let's do, uh, let's do this one. Why not? The slave unit will move over there and probably merge them with them. And let's also upgrade our troops. They most likely have enough experience to 4,700 with the increased experience from the best Tokarius Gaius. I believe uh, Julius Caesar is my ancestor. Or my descendant, not ancestor. Uh, let's upgrade Weapon Master, 25% damage. Standard Bearer increases our morale. Scout increases our size, our scout distance, our view distance. Raider. Uh, there is an ambush stance. I haven't really done much with that, but it is there. Uh, scavenge, instead of capturing a enemy resource point, like an enemy vineyard, you can instead scavenge and take resources from it. Uh, you can also raid it. I haven't really raided that much. Increase our resource capacity so we can travel further away from our supply lines. Hunter reduces the amount of food that we take. And again, you only have four slots, so you kind of have to choose what you want this unit to focus on. This is just going to be a frontline fighter, so let's go with Medic to increase defenses. We can upgrade Weapon Master to level 3. I'm going to do that. We have so much experience points. And then let's go to the other units with uh, this guy. As far as I can tell, you can't really rename any other generals. I haven't been able to find a way to do it, if you can. And you also can't, again, from what I've seen so far, rename units. I really wish you could, because you know me. I love renaming units after all of you. Um, I love to take uh, requests on what to name units. I really wish you could rename these, because that would be awesome. But I don't think you can. Anyway, let's level up this officer. We've got 2,000 experience. Uh, let's make this guy a scout so he can see farther. Max morale. Uh, let's do trainer. We can maybe make him a raider, see what that's like. And I may save the last slot for something else. Alright, I think that's going to do it for the first episode, everybody. We got a new city, which I'm going to click this level up button. It should only be 200. 100, actually. We have 500 in stock, so we're just going to level that up to level 2. Uh, you can see that this is a level 2 city from these Roman numerals right there. Uh, but yeah, that's going to do it for the first episode. Hope you enjoyed. I'll see you in the next one when we will expand... I believe there's a city down here we can take, and then we'll go north. Onward to Rome. Take care.